Hey everybody, I'm here with this week's special guest, James Patrick, author of Ashes Will Fall. Welcome, James. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. James is joining us from Iraq, so I really appreciate him taking the time to join me and answer my questions. So, James, tell me, how did you get started in writing? Well, it's been a lifelong dream of mine to always be writing. I started when I was younger, started writing short stories, little stories. Uh, in school, I was always the kid who, when the teacher said, we have an essay today, instead of groaning and moaning about it, I was always like, yes. Um, but, you know, it started when I was very young. Um, I loved to write. Then as I grew, I changed my writing style from something that was, you know, more of like a school-related to something that was more fun related. And I started really getting into it when I became a teenager and my best friend and I decided, hey, let's make some movies. Um, we used to make little movies and I used to write the scripts for them and we would record them on a camcorder. I still stand to this day that if we had YouTube and the phones we have today and the technology, we would be famous, but <laughs> that's getting ahead of ourselves. But that's pretty much how I started. I've just always had a passion and love for writing. That's awesome. And I bet you're right. If you had YouTube back then, you probably would be famous because it's crazy the stuff you can do on YouTube now. It's just amazing. It, it really is. And we had, a, we had a group of friends that we would just do these little fight scenes and action scenes and chase scenes. And it was just awesome. But we had no audience to show it to. So it just that never went anywhere. Today... We, we would be famous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when is um, so you have Ashes Will Fall, and you've also got your short stories, Rudy's Rangers. So are those the first works that you've published? They are the first works that I've actually had published. I had to step up my game. A couple of years ago, my daughter, who was at nine at the time, had her first work published as a young author. And she'd always make fun of me because I always was like, I have books, I need to write them. And she's like, well, I'm already published. <laughs> so she's been published three times through traditional publishing. And I was like, I need to step my game up. So uh, yes, Ashes Will Fall was actually my first uh, full length novel. And Rudy's Rangers is more of a uh, accompaniment to Ashes Will Fall. Um, it's basically a story of one of my main characters, Rudy Valentino, and it's his pre-story leading up to Ashes Will Fall. Awesome. So you're competing with your daughter. <laughs> uh, I'm not even competing. She's, she's incredible. She's a genius. She's even wrote a, a script that has to take place with bullying, and it's been filmed by a professional studio and it's being distributed throughout Florida to schools along with their bullying camp, anti-bullying campaign. Wow, that is awesome. Good for her. That, yes. wow, that is so great. It's not even fair. <laughs> yeah. And you said Now if I can me. only convince... <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to convince her now to join me in uh, writing a young adult uh, series, but she's just busy getting straight A's in school. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's awesome. And so you said she's been published three times through traditional publishing. It was uh, through the Young Author Program through school, and it was uh, with traditional publishers, real book and everything, distributed at book fairs throughout the country, and all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. Wow, that's really inspiring. That's awesome. It um, really is. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the most difficult thing about putting your writing out there? The most difficult thing to put out there is the constant worry and concern that you're not going to live up to your own expectations. You know, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've reached out to bloggers or pe other people to read it and give me some feedback. And every time they sent me a message on Facebook, they're like, hey, I'm reading your book, and I would have a mini panic attack. Um, so it's more, it's more of a self-confidence thing, especially when you're first starting out, although I don't ever anticipate that feeling going away. It's always that, am I going to live up to what I hold my standard to? And that's the biggest concern. It's not, am I going to make sales and, you know, are, am I going to get reviews? It's, are, am I going to be accepted? 
Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I just started working on my first book. Um, well, just a few weeks ago, really, and I'm finding the same thing. Like, I was actually frozen to start working on it, and mine is nonfiction. So I would think that even nonfiction would be. I wouldn't have that because it's nonfiction. <laughs> but I still, I still, I still feel that it's like, oh, what are people going to think of this when they read it? Like, you know. So I could totally relate to that. <laughs> I have a I have a couple of friends that we work together as as writers. We work uh, we work on our own projects, but you know we support each other. We help each other if we're stuck. You know we we'll talk and chat and work issues out. And uh, it seems to be that throughout everything, that's the biggest turn is that uh, you know when you're getting near the end, coming towards publishing and releasing it, you'll sit there and you'll read through it and you'll look at it and you'll be like. I can't do it. I have to post. This is not good enough. I can't do it. And, you know, we have to talk each other off a ledge. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've already gone through this. It's fine. Let's get out there. And we talk each other down. And so far, we've been pretty, uh, for a first time book being published, each of us has done pretty well. Oh, that's great. So it sounds like you're telling me it's going to get worse <laughs> as I get closer to publishing. I've got to tell you, leading up to, of course, when I released Ashes Will Fall, I had a major issue. But uh, the few days leading up to releasing it, I mean, I was having nightmares that I released the book and people came to me and said it was so bad they were making me the army again after 10 years of being out. <laughs> so, yeah, this level was pretty high. Um, we were pretty nervous about it. Um, I was driving my girlfriend crazy with it. Um, but then we had the actual meltdown that I uploaded the wrong book to Amazon, the wrong file. So I had to quickly go in and change that. So yeah, it was a very stressful day. But as soon as the release party started, as soon as we started having the author take over on Facebook and got to chat with people and people were like, I'm buying your book right now. It <laughs> all the stress went away. It was great. Awesome. <laughs> and so I have read Ashes Will Fall, as you know, and I totally enjoyed it. And I'm going to share the link, um, the Amazon link, so that anybody that's interested can grab a copy. Um, when you're writing, do you base any of your stories or characters on real people or real events at all? Well, there's a certain extent that I do some characters based on certain people, not necessarily the entire character, but certain things about them. Uh, when you read um, Rudy's Writers, for example, uh, you have jo uh, Joseph Raymond and you have Rudy Valentino. That was based off their characteristics, their physical characteristics, myself and my best friend growing up. Rudy is a short, stocky, uh, light-skinned guy, and... Joseph is a tall, slim, dark-skinned guy, and they're inseparable. They're brothers, and my best friend growing up, his name was Miguel, and we had convinced everybody that we were brothers. We just had different dads, and uh, it was very funny when your mother gets called in and talks about your brother, and your mother doesn't have any idea what they're talking about, <laughs> so... Uh, you know, for a certain extent, I do have certain characteristics from people, but my character is something that's very personal for myself. My favorite part of the writing process is actually creating the characters. You know, I go to extensive backgrounds. I totally get to know each character as an individual, how they speak, how they act, where they've come from. And I develop them, and they become real for me. So I do take certain characteristics from that, but the characters become the, a new person that I just met. The, act, the activities that happen in the book are completely fabricated. <laughs> Nothing from experience. If you read Ashes Will Fall, I've never killed a drug dealer in a dark alley um, or anything of the sort. So... Um, that has that's just completely fabricated you know when i come up with my stories i basically come up with the main plot what i want to happen and i take my characters and put them in a situation and i see what they do and it's uh it's strange with my writing process because i've been told it's uh an interesting thing where i write and it seems like i'm almost i'm physically there but i'm not mentally there 
And it's because when I, in my mind, I'm playing a picture or a movie or a film of what my characters are doing. And I just write it down. So in truth, I create my own characters, but every action activity, everything like that, that's completely fabricated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's good to know that you haven't killed any drug dealers in dark alleys or anything like that. Yeah. But I like that. I, I try that. <laughs> I like the way you say you start with the characters and then the stories are, you know, what the character would do in that situation because it's so true to the character and then people are reading it and they're not going to think, oh, well, wait a minute, that's not going to happen, you know, because it's true to that character. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so what do you do when you find you've got a block? Where do you find your inspiration to keep going? See, uh, there's a lot of ways that I've heard that people have said to get around it. Um, but one of the best things I ever heard was um, through one of, through a very exceptional leader. Um, he uh, was giving a lecture on the subject of writing and uh, writer's block and stuff like that. And he was basically explaining that when you feel the need to write and you're writing, you feel like you're writing well, say you're writing at 120% of your capacity. When you have a block, you're writing about 60%. So when, you, when you're having that block, just keep writing. Even if it doesn't sound right, it's not coming out right, you're not looking the way it is, just keep writing. Because once you get it down and you go through the editing process, the two equal themselves out. Now, I took that advice, and I think it's very good advice, but um, nothing can be writing. If I find that I'm in a, a block and I can't... Uh, get through it and I just hate what I'm writing, I'll do some free writing. I'll just uh, maybe write a short story or just uh, sing fun. You know, I've had, I have so many notebooks filled with uh, partial stories that are just fun, you know, apocalyptic running from zombies. And, but of course they're the slow zombies, not the fast one because I hate cardio. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's just, uh, I try to you try to do something fun, something that's going to get you reinvigorated, and then as soon as it starts flowing, get back into it. Well, that's really great advice. Just keep going, and yeah, you just like you say, it's sixty percent versus your one twenty, so you're doing a little bit less, but you're still going forward. So that's really really great. So, can you tell us what you're working on right now, or is that top secret? Oh, no, I could tell you all about it. Um, um, Ashes Will Fall is actually uh, the first book. It's actually more of a sequel, or I'm sorry, a prequel. It's setting up the rest of the entire series of the books. And it everything from the rest of the series, which is going to end up being four more books, um, is based off all the activities and missions that, be, that take place in Ashes. Um, so... Um, what I'm going to do is next year, I've um, actually pretty crazy. Uh, in the past two months, I've outlined three books. Um, and the rest of the, the Ashes series is already outlined. So next year, I'm going to be taking the entire year writing some novels. Um, one of which I created purely for the reason of making my readers cry. <laughs> <laughs> So before I even sat down to outline it, I told my friends, I told my girlfriend, I'm like, I'm writing this book to make everybody cry. So I'm, I'm working on those. Uh, next year I'm going to be working on all, um, three novels, try to get them out by 2018. And can, that way I can have a continuous publishing schedule so people can actually see where I'm going with each series that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to try my hand because Rudy, Rudy's Rangers was an enormous success. I was so, so shocked at how, ma how many sales I get on that. Even today, I had a couple sales on Rangers, not on Ashes Will Fall. So I decided to go ahead and work on a few more short story series. One of them will be urban fantasy, and one of them will be a high fantasy short story series that I'm going to work on and get out next year. Same deal, they're going to be 99 cents, and I'm going to be releasing a new story every week. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to do it somewhat like a TV show, so that every week they come out a new story that continues. And 
hopefully it'll be as popular as Rangers was, and if not more. Wow, it sounds like you're going to be really busy next year. <laughs> oh, I've got yeah, – when I talk to my friends about it, they're like, that's a lot of writing. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've got also a blog that I'm going to be – that I've started already that – um, I deal with the writing process, but I'm going to expand that onto so many things next year. So when I started talking to my friends and going through my schedule, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this and this, and I'm going to do this on this day. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's only seven days in a week. <laughs> but being over here, it definitely gives me an opportunity to write a lot more than if I were home. So that's one benefit of being over here versus at home is I've got nothing but free time and it's very easy to get ahead in things. Right. So um, the one thing that I like when you're talking about the success with Rudy's Rangers and so I've, I think I read the first one. I, I can't remember if it was the first one or one further in the series, but I definitely want to read more because those, I found those characters really interesting and um for me, I'm a super slow reader, so what I liked about Rudy's Rangers is because it's a shorter story, it's easy to get through. Um, so that's why I want to read more, um, plus because it's exciting storyline as well. Um, but I did really enjoy Ashes and all the subplots that you had going on in there, so I'm excited that you are doing more with the characters from Ashes and that you've got these other three novels outlined. I can't wait to see what they're all about. So you're they actually, uh, the exciting thing is, is they all take place in the same uh, universe. So even though they're not taking place like uh, Ashes is in Miami, even though it's not taking place in Miami, it's taking, one of them's taking place in Orlando. It actually is, ha the events that are happening in Ashes affect the story in uh, the new one. And also when you get a little bit further and those who have actually uh, have read the rest of the Rudy Theater series, there's a group of characters in there towards the end that uh, play a big part. And uh, just to say it, um, they're getting their own series as well. Awesome. Right on. And your blog, is that already um, up and going? Like if people wanted to check that out, they could... Okay. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's up and going on my website, uh, jamespatrick.com. And uh, I have all my books all linked to, uh, to everything through there. Um, and I also have my blog up there. Okay, awesome. I'll, I'll share the link for that under the video as well so people can easily find it. Great. So just in wrapping up then, what would you say to somebody who is – Maybe, maybe they've been writing all along, but they've never thought about publishing anything and that they just, they just want to get started. What would you say to them? What would you say to them? I would say the first step is to reach out to people who have gone through the process. There's a ton of groups on Facebook and that are open to helping people. Um, aspiring authors is one of the ones that we are members of and it's incredible you know support there is just utterly incredible mm -hmm. but um reach out to people do your research if you uh, de decide way the um way if you want to go traditional versus uh independent if you want to self-publish or go through the traditional process weigh the benefits of each don't don't make a snap decision don't let somebody else dictate to you what you're going to do um, figure out what you do, what's best for you. And then uh, just keep writing, go through the process. And if you decide to do one or the other, stick to it. Go for it. If you want to go traditional, don't get down if you get that rejection uh, letter. You're going to get them. J.K. Rowling's had, what, over 200? So just send, send it out. Get it out. Try the worst that's going to happen is saying we're not interested while well, there's a thousand other agents out there looking for someone. So don't get discouraged by a rejection letter. If you're going to go the independent route, have your friends help. Get as many people to help you through the process as possible because this is not an easy process. It's not free and it takes help to get your name out there, to get your, the word out there, to contact people, 
to create the buzz. It's not as easy as everybody thinks. Oh, you just put it up and magically get sales. No, it's not how it works. So if you're going to go the independent route, friends, work in groups, and have them help you. Um, but uh, do it. It took me 15 years to finally get ashes out because I never thought it would be enough. Finally, one day I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. I paid to have a cover made. That was my driving force. I spent money on it as well as my blood and tears. So it was time to get it done. So make the leap. Just do it. Great advice. Just do it. Don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> That's it. So if somebody wants to find out more about you and your book, I'm guessing your website, um, Amazon is best for your uh, Amazon, my website, or they can just, uh, they can find everything through Facebook. Uh, but my web is, you know, my hub. It has the links to everything that you can find me on. Social media, emails, uh, links to all my work, and everything. In the blog, of course. Of course, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for so much the interview. You. It's been great talking with you. Um, uh, feel free to post okay. it on my page throughout the week if you want to share something with us. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, it's going to, Facebook going to get a couple shares tonight. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, awesome. All right, thanks, James. All right, thank you. Bye, everyone.